Say what you will, and of course I often do, about Gran Turismo's updates and scheduling and especially communication with the community, they do add some pretty damn good cars once in a while, and the past two editions, that's of course three cars either time, have actually been a pretty nice selection. The Suzuki Escudo coming back, of course the Porsche 918 Spyder here making its debut, along with the Nissan Super Silhouette Skyline, another returning legend from the series. These are some really cool cars, and of course others peppered in there as well. In the case of this Porsche though, as any of you who watched my overarching review of this 1.19 patch will have seen, if you haven't driven the car yet, if you haven't bought the car yet, it has some strange issues. Now I feel like they're probably going to address these issues in a patch, so take some of these things in the review with a more forward-thinking approach. So in other words, I hope these things change, but for now we're reviewing this as kind of a day one build, if you will. Now the main problem with this Porsche is simply put, the hybrid system does not work properly. It doesn't put the power down in the correct way, it doesn't perform in the correct way, and even when you fully tune the car to around 950 horses, it's no way near as quick as you'd expect. In fact, in my experience, it struggles to pass around 220, 225 miles per hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now with that in mind, it should be putting out a way higher performance point level as well. Fully tuned, it was something like I think 750, 760 points, and even stock, it sits at 664 which itself you would expect to be a lot higher, even for a road car. Now it is fairly heavy, 1674 kilos, which of course is partially due to the hybrid system, the batteries, etc. But it has 874 horsepower to counteract that with. Naturally aspirated power as well, which is pretty nice. Now despite the issues which the car has, which we're all hoping get fixed, probably in an update fairly soon I would imagine, given the outcry about the car, even with that being the case, this is a really, really good car to work with. Now, again, I mentioned in that review of the patch, I took this car around the Neutschleifer, of course, as you can see here, and simply put, it was way quicker than the Carrera GT. The Carrera GT has a more raw, pure, almost race car for the road kind of vibe in an old school sense, as you'd expect. But the downside to that is, because it's more challenging, and because it's just less powerful, etc., it's not going to be as quick. This car is way faster, even in stock form, even in glitched form, around pretty much any circuit, than something like even a supercar from a decade prior, like a Carrera GT, an SLR, whatever the case may be, would have been. In this occasion, I found it to be around 30 to 40 seconds quicker, around one lap of the Nürburgring. That's a pretty big difference for two stock supercars. And the crucial difference, I would say, is not the power, it's not the straight line performance, it's how forgiving this car is. It is such a pleasure to work with through corners. As you can see in the video, you can step the tail out, you can drift it for sure, and you could certainly overcook it, lose control, brake too late, etc. But this footage is literally the first time I drove the car. This is the first time it has turned its wheels in anger under my control in the game. As you can see from the mileage at the bottom of the screen, it was a brand new vehicle. And yet, you know, straight away, it's just easy to work with. I touched the grass here and there, but never overcooked it, never flew off the track. Whereas with the Carrera GT, much like its reputation would imply, it does bite back a lot more. That kind of Lamborghini Diablo kind of reputation, or a TVR, or a Cobra. Now, despite the issues with the car, they may actually give us, at least for a little while, some advantages of using this one. For example, the aforementioned performance points not being high enough isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's bad for not being fair, but it's pretty good for career mode, because you can use this car with quite a bit of power and not too much weight in, for example, the Lamar Cash Cow event, the half hour endurance, and it's putting out a similar amount of power to something like a Veyron, but with less weight and it's more nimble on its feet. So potentially a pretty nice advantage to have for the moment, and I believe that advantage will go away if they do fix it, because those points should be way, way higher. For some comparison as well, a far superior vehicle to work with around the track than a Carrera GT is of course the 911 GT1 from Porsche. That thing is a beast, rightfully so, and you fully tune that thing, you're looking at over 800 points. But it has way less power than this. It doesn't have the all-wheel drive advantage. 
supposedly, if it were working at least, and that is a quicker car in a straight line. So that's the kind of territory I would be expecting this one to be in, more like 800 points fully tuned, so we'll have to see how that pans out in the future. As far as price, I'm glad to say it undercut what I thought it was going to be. I was expecting at least 2 million. It's 1.6. That's pretty much perfect, I would say, for a car like this. It is already a modern legend, much like a LaFerrari, a McLaren P1, my personal favourite, the one that never got a chance, the Jaguar CX-75. These are modern cult classics immediately, and it, when you drive them, it's not hard to see why. They are technical marvels, allowing not just the kind of performance that supercars have always had for their time, but also an unprecedented level of driver feedback. In other words, a forgiving car. Like I said earlier on, they are so easy to use and so easy to get so much performance out of. And that is nine-tenths of what allows you to get an immediate great lap out of a car like this. Whereas back in the day when you used to control a car with the throttle, or steer a car with the throttle, vintage race cars or road cars, this is so far away from that kind of era. And it's a pleasure to work with. I'm really happy that the 918 is in the game now. I hope that they fix it, but for the moment, even if it doesn't get fixed, it's already a fantastic car, which is a testament to how good it is in the game. If you haven't tried it out yet, I would definitely recommend doing so. It definitely has the potential to pay for itself in only two races at Le Mans. You've literally earned the cash back, so yeah, definitely an investment you would want to have. It looks great, sounds pretty nice, it's great for scapes, and it's actually potentially more useful than something like a LaFerrari or the McLaren, certainly more useful than the McLaren because that's more of a full-on race spec model like an FXX, but also more useful than maybe the LaFerrari due to stuff like invitations. Or even just that car having way more power because it's more correctly implemented into the game. So ultimately, give the 918 a try if you haven't already. I think it's a great addition, and I look forward to talking about the other two cars as well, because all three of these are pretty damn nice cars. So give me your thoughts down below. Do you like the car? Do you dislike the car? Of course, some chatter, and doubtless about how broken it is. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.